I was too excited to wait and decided to crash my upload schedule to introduce you to our new refrigerator. <laughs> If you want to skip all the preliminary information, I will put a time mark below and you can just skip to that part of the installation. But for those of you who are new or would like a little bit more background information, uh, let me share that this is a 2018 Pleasure Way Ascent. It came with a Dometic three-way refrigerator, that's an absorption refrigerator. The model number was RM8505. It was a 3.8 cubic meter refrigerator. Now the new Ascents, the ones being manufactured as of this summer, will be coming with a compressor fridge. Uh, so no more of the three-way in the Pleasure Way Ascent. So for those of you who may not understand why we wanted to go from an absorption refrigerator to a compressor refrigerator, uh, the fridge we had was a three-way. And as far as I'm concerned, the only advantage of a three-way is it can run on propane or on shore power or on your house batteries. However, when it runs on house batteries, it uses a lot of energy. It's kind of an energy hog in that respect. Yes, it doesn't use much when it's on propane, but a lot when it's on uh, your house batteries. In last week's video, we were at Craters of the Moon and because of our propane issue, which is we had to run it on our house batteries. So we left the van for about four hours to do the hikes and bikes that we did. And when we came back, the house batteries were at 86%. And that's despite the fact that we had some solar. It was an overcast day, but we were still getting solar. It was between the hours of 8 a.m. and noon that we left the van. And when your voltage drops below a certain point with our, uh, we have, uh, 200 amp hours of, on lithium batteries and 200 watts of solar on the roof. When your amperage uh, voltage drops too low, then the batteries just shut off to, to help protect the batteries. And we had that happen to us a couple of times this past year. Once was at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta when we had another problem. We had to run the batteries off of the house battery, the fridge off the house battery. And uh, it went completely dead about four o'clock in the morning. But the real problem that you have with an absorption fridge is when temperatures are like above 75 or 80 degrees, it can really struggle to keep the temperature inside at a safe level, which is considered 40 degrees, between like 37 and 40. And uh, so it was always a, a struggle to, uh, <laughs> to keep it cold enough, which meant that we had to carry an extra ice chest with us for something that really mattered that you didn't want to have get spoiled. And it also meant that we had to have a level refrigerator. You have to be like three degrees in one direction and six degrees in the other, or maybe five. Anyway, your van has to be relatively level. And so there were actually times when we didn't park somewhere because we knew that the fridge would be too unlevel. The other issue is at elevation. And we spend a lot of our time at elevation. In California, you know, there are just mountains everywhere. And you really can't go anywhere without getting above 5,000 feet. And so when it is above 5,000 feet, it appears from my research that there is some kind of a gas-air mixture uh, that probably needs to be adjusted, but I've never found a way that it can be adjusted. And so I've pretty much tried everything in this fridge, uh, you know, keeping ice packs and then rotating them between the freezer and the fridge and, and uh, you know, everything that you can possibly do. And finally, I had had enough and it was time to investigate another fridge. Now, that wasn't quite so easy because it really came down to size and especially the depth of the cabinet. I didn't want to make a lot of adjustments to the cabinetry and, uh, uh, a lot of the fridges just didn't fit. I know a lot of you made recommendations and I appreciate that and I looked at all of them and and finally it came down to the size of the unit and the efficiency because you want a unit that is super efficient that's going to just sip power from your batteries and allow you to uh, go off grid for you know days on end and may and actually I think in our case in the summertime indefinitely. So I settled on the isotherm Elegance 115 and I really wasn't sure it was going to fit. It has an interesting profile. 
the top is kind of indented and a little bit at the bottom. But there's a pipe that runs up the backside of, the, um, of where the old fridge was, and it vents the sink and it vents the gray tank. And I really didn't want to have to move that. It would have been a real issue if I'd had to, to move that. So I knew I was really close in the dimensions. And in fact, I calculated I'd be about a half inch off. And that is exactly what it was. It was a half inch. The, the, this fridge is a half inch too deep without moving that pipe. But it didn't matter to me. It was such a perfect fit. Uh, the the width-wise was perfect. I didn't have to do anything to the cabinetry and the height was, you know, maybe an inch difference. And the most of that is at the bottom so you don't see it. So it sits proud about half an inch, but I figure I can put some kind of um, molding or some insulation or something in there to uh, kind of cover up this gap along the top. So let me show you the inside. It's actually on right now and I've been monitoring the um, energy consumption. Uh, it's so funny. I, I'm so glad I installed that battery monitor because that gave me the confidence that this thing can work for us. And uh, so overnight it went down to 92% of the battery power and by 7, 7.30 in the morning it was back to 100% just from the very small solar gain that we get, uh, you know, just as the sun is rising. So I was really pleased about that. Um, but uh, it's uh, 4.2 cubic feet, so it's a little bit larger than the old one. And it has a much larger freezer, which was important to me because I like ice. And I can actually make ice in here. Uh, this has been on for a few days, so it's got a little bit of frost in here. But uh, I, just, I just really like the layout. It's a deeper refrigerator, which I think is going to be very useful. It has a nice uh, large drawer at the bottom where I can... Um, uh, you know, put vegetables and things like that. And the door is, seems to be uh, geared toward holding milk containers and taller bottles. So that will be really nice. So now let's get into the installation. And by the way, I want to mention that Pleasureway was very helpful. They sent me photographs of what the cavity looks like before they install the refrigerators. And so that was helpful in kind of getting a figure on how it looked. And my next door neighbor, Bruce helped me with the installation and it was much simpler than we thought. But I think the whole thing, if we take out our lunch break, maybe took four hours. I was really impressed with the trucking company that delivered this. They called, they kept us apprised of uh, when they would be there. It was just a really nice uh, company. And so once we got it, we inspected it to make sure there wasn't any damage and then proceeded to start the unboxing. This refrigerator was lighter than the Dometic, which was nice to know because we thought it might be a little bit of a struggle to get it into the, the van. Here's the instruction manual. Oh, nice big freezer. I decided to remove the shelves in the cabinet to make it lighter. This second shelf is actually screwed in on the one side, which is why you saw me kind of struggling there. Uh, those shelves, though, are glass. The other ones in the Dometic were plastic. Objects like milk are always a problem in small refrigerators. So I was really glad that this one held milk really securely, especially it has these little movable tabs along the sides. This unit comes with the door swinging open on the left side and we had to switch that around. And uh, there is a video online that you can watch. So this is where Things have changed from the video online. It's a different refrigerator, but we think this is what we're supposed to be doing. So this thing. 
and moves around. Once that was done, we could turn our attention to making sure everything was disconnected. We turned off the propane and also made sure to bleed off any gas that's in the line by lighting the stove. And we also unplugged the power from the refrigerator. There's a, a regular AC plug in that cavity and we just unplugged that. You can then disconnect the house batteries around the back of the unit, around the back of the, actually the RV, uh, just disconnect the house batteries completely. And there's also a battery switched on the inside of the van right below the control panel, so we made sure that that was off. And then finally, uh, cap off the gas line, making sure you use that yellow tape that's meant for using for gas appliances. And sixteenths for the gas line. And the block is just a crescent wrench. Okay. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> Plug in and the plug size came from Pleasure Way. You need to hold it. Yeah, because you're screwing it on the wrong way. Yes, I am. <laughs> I wanted to demonstrate and see if you would catch that. Yes. yes. See all the plumbing I've done around here. I'm good at that. I'm good at that. Part. Am I moving it too much? Well, of course, but that's all right. You're a guy. Yeah, I know. One is the plug is five eighths and the other side three quarter. No, not three quarter. Thirteen sixteenths. So now I'm just tightening it. I really can't see what I'm doing because somebody has a camera in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so we have right now orange going to orange. That makes a little sense here because it's it's not a power. It's not driving power, providing power. This is your new um, your common. So the black, That's fine. but this is coming in as a yellow and this is your power line, yeah. which. So why did they use yellow? Why did of they red? use yellow instead of red? Because red is know. coming out of here. So whenever we put it back together, we'll have to make sure okay. we remember that. Okay, there you go. Okay, and Bruce says remove the power first and then the, which one? Then the common, the and, black one. Oh, wait a minute. You gotta go righty tighty, I know, lefty loosey. Gotta loosen. <laughs> Let me put this in your face. How does Paula stand you? She doesn't. <laughs> she tells okay. me to go to the garage. Yeah, really. Go to the man cave. Go buy a Bronco and fix it. <laughs> For sure. You miss your you Bronco? Should, you, should, you should be able to pull it out now. Yeah, I should be. No, I don't. Okay, and then the neutral? Yes. I mean, then the um, black. black. That doesn't feel very tight. And That's, then the orange. Uh, yeah. That's not very tight either. Well, at least you won't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. Power AC. on. So AC is off. Propane. DC is disconnected and the propane is disconnected and capped. And the only thing that's going to hold us up now, according to Doug Tucker, is there is some, you know, goopy stuff around the seat. This kind of seat. Well, that's not where it's sealed, though. No, it's sealed. Up yeah, it's down there. It's okay, so he suggested getting a uh, two by four, but you can't use it here, probably up there on that vent and then pushing. So somebody's pushing from the outside and then there are four screws that hold the refrigerator in and they are behind these little white plastic plugs. This is one of those Robertson bits. I think it's a number one. What do you think, John? It's a one. It might be printed on them. I forgot to film this part, but you have to remove the control panel, which is held on by two screws, and then you have to remove these feet. And that was a little bit more challenging because they are facing the wrong direction. Somebody has, oh, this is coming off by hand. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, good. Once those were out, it was a matter of pushing and pulling, and we tried some wooden blocks, and uh, Bruce was on the outside, and then he went on the inside, and both John and Bruce were in there pulling the rig out. Outside. Ready? Yeah. Oh. oh! Oh, watch those hands. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
extra this this piece here is an inch and a half and we need it to be three quarters of an inch so i gotta take this board out I also removed the power connection, and those are also the Robertson bits. And if you're interested in the story behind the Robertson bit, I'll put a link in the description box below. So we need a three quarter inch lift instead of one and a half, which is. The phone was actually set on slow-mo here. So I'll just to tell you what I was explaining, which is that I needed uh, to cut the De the uh, height of this in half and so I had to cut the board out in order to get it out of there they have this slope so that water uh -huh. water goes in there it will drain oh. out yeah. but it was uh, three-quarter inch too tall because it was an inch and a half and I need it to be three-quarter inch so I cut a piece of wood oh, I'm gonna screw that in and then I needed a piece here that's three-quarter inch so this will go in the front I should probably paint it first some white spray paint on it <laughs> so that goes in the front and then I think there's a bit of an internal frame inside of the unit and we needed an extra inch or so so I'm attempting to cut it out with the jigsaw but then we had to switch it over to a tool that, that Bruce had on and that one on the other side is cut and ideally we would want to save this piece and bend it back ouch Hurts. Oh, you know what? I bet you they have a nail in here, and that's why they put goop on there. Oh, not a nail, but a screw. Is there a screw behind there? I duct taped the microwave cord. Oh, you can see my hand. I duct taped it to the back of the microwave so that when we cut through here. One more, le, one more screw to get out. Le screw, le screw hole. Okay. Hey. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're wearing work, work appropriate clothing. This time, try not to scratch the top. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Watch out for that wet water. He's got a water glass. Uh oh. I can. <laughs> Set her in. Oh my gosh. Okay. Raise her up. Do we have some a board that is supposed to go in here, yes. or after we get it in? Yeah, probably after we get it in, because the feet. There's a little feet. What's the? Yeah. Is it? Or is it? No. I also added a piece of I think it was three quarter inch plywood for the back of the refrigerator to sit on place the, uh, and then zip tied this up we are not going to install this until we figure it out and then we're going to clamp this down here and then the wires will go in here and the neutral first mm -hmm. uh, here let me go like this <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it does nice and clean yeah. and quiet And then I put the four screws into the cabinet again to hold the refrigerator in place. And we had a little bit of aluminum tape to seal up at the top, but we need to get some more. And finally, the one thing we do need to come back to is sealing around the refrigerator uh, where I removed that shelf. We had to remove that silicone, so we need to put more silicone around to seal it back up. So there's this little bit of a gap here and this wire is for the smart controller that we have not installed because we haven't figured that out yet. We need to contact Isotherm. I can put a little piece of trim there or something, but we really like the looks of it. The only thing I would say is it's a little harder. It almost takes two hands to open it, but it is so quiet. And there are no, there are no lights up here to keep me awake at night. I don't have to cover it up with black tape anymore.
and there is a gap underneath the refrigerator, but who's going to see that? I hope this is helpful to a lot of you who have also struggled with your absorption refrigerators. There is a solution. It's not cheap. It was uh, $1,200 for this unit, plus I think it was $250 to ship it um, from back east. We did have to wait quite a while because of the pandemic and they had to get parts from Italy. And so it was, it was quite a, a long wait, but was well worth it. I'm just so excited about having a fridge that I have confidence in. And we don't have to carry the ice chest anymore. <laughs> so if you have any questions, put them below. Thanks for watching.